The United States Department of Health and Human Services estimates that 120,000 Americans are currently on the waiting list to receive organ donations. Hopefully, someday soon, the groundbreaking research of Turkish scientist Ibrahim Ozbalat may help shorten the wait time and lower death rates among those who are still waiting. At the Ozbalat Lab at Pennsylvania State University, Professor Ozbalat and his team are researching the cutting-edge field of bioprinting science to be used in various areas of regenerative medicine. Their current research includes tissue engineering and bioprinting a pancreatic organ for type 1 diabetes. Success in this area of research could eventually help increase the availability of organs not only in the United States, but ultimately around the world. Dr. Osbalat is here to share more about his innovative research. Uh, fascinating stuff. So talk to our audience, just kind of walk us through, because, uh, you know, 3D printing, I think of it, you know, like back when it first kind of came about, people were thinking, well, this, you, maybe you can make th this product really quickly or that. But I don't think they started thinking, well, let's look at the body. I mean, it, it, that was kind of a leap, wasn't it, medicine? Sure. Uh, like... Two decades ago, uh, I think uh, the first 3D printed scaffold was, uh, was made and the cells were added on that. So the scaffold means it's a temporary uh, housing for cells. It's like a portal structure where we can see the cells and then put that in the body. And eventually the cells grow in the body and then the scaffold, it's, it's a biodegradable material, which means the body uh, eats it, it dissolves it in the body and then uh, the cells make the tissue. So uh, this was the first time it was uh, started, uh, you know, just printing inert materials, scaffolds, and adding cells, and then transplanting that uh, using 3D printing technology. Uh, but later, you know, cells started to be printed, and then uh, like 10 years ago, and now we can print tissues. Mm. And hopefully in, in the next 10 years, we can be able to make larger scale organs. Yes, and we'll, we'll get into that in just a minute. You brought along some props. Kind of walk us through what we have here and, and explain to us uh, why they're important. Well, these are some examples, uh, 3D printed parts uh, from my class. Uh, it was the bioprinting class. So here is pelvis and uh, here is the femur. It's a, it's a joint model uh, that the students actually getting this information from the medical data. It's, it's, it's from medical images like CD scan or MRI from a patient. And then students create 3D models in the computer and then send that information to, uh, to the 3D printer and the 3D printer makes it. it it's the, of course, scale down of an actual one, uh, like an actual pelvis of femur, but uh, it basically recapitulates the exact shape. So uh, it captures the exact shape. It enables us to make a very complicated object. So this is really hard to make using uh, traditional or or standard uh, manufacturing techniques, but with the 3D printing process where we're adding layers, uh, it's, it's like uh, to, to make an analogy, uh, it's constructing a building. So uh, when we construct a building, we start from the bottom floor and then we add floor by floor, go like that and build a whole, uh, whole, 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 whole building. So uh, with the 3D printing, we basically follow the similar concept. So we add layers uh, and then go, uh, you know, from bottom layer to, to the top layer, uh, and, and uh, you know, it takes some time depending on the manufacturing technique, but uh, in the past, uh, we could be able to use only plastics and metals, sometimes ceramics, uh, nowadays we make composites, uh, we even print food. Uh, we can print tissues, uh, we can print glass and various materials. So let me ask if I'm a patient, uh, the benefits of this versus metal per se or, or the, the older way of doing things, is it that it feels more like the real deal, uh, my recovery is easier? I mean, what are some of the benefits you see for a patient? So uh, this is just a plastic, but uh, for tissue engineering perspective, we make this thing using bone cells. Uh, like a pelvis from bone or femur from bone cells, uh, and then eventually it's going to be a part of the uh, the human. So it will be like the original one. Mm -hmm. It won't be like metal uh, or other materials like ceramic materials. It won't really generate a lot of uh, you know immune response. It won't really generate like long-term problems. Uh, it will be more reliable, uh, and it won't really need a secondary surgery or tertiary surgery. And you find with bodies, they, they reject, but I mean, if it's, it feels like the real deal, I imagine the body uh, is, is a lot more welcoming towards this as well. Well, 
As soon as we use uh, uh, patient's own cells or starting with stem cells uh, and differentiating those to uh, organ-specific cells, uh, so the likelihood of rejection from the body is very, very minimal. Yeah, and some of the other items we're looking at here. So we have like, uh, like uh, here is a scaffold. This is a vertebra. Mm. So this is porous. Right. Uh, as you can see, uh, it needs to be porous. The reason is that uh, we need to put the cells on the scaffold and cells, they need to migrate into, into this structure and then proliferate within that, grow and make more cells. And then we transplant that back to human uh, and then this materially degrade in, in the body. Right. And, and the cells make the tissue. And the yeah. cells are coming. It's amazing. Correct. Uh, what else do we have here? So we have like a dental model. Uh, so this is a high precision uh, printing. Uh, so this is from a, a medical mm. uh, image set. Uh, so we can make it very close to what it is in the, you know, in, in the uh, real, real tit. Uh -huh. So in terms of geometric accuracy, it's very high. This is a, based on laser uh, technology. Uh, we have different technologies in 3D printing, like extrusion uh, or like inkjet, uh, which is like paper printing. Paper printing is inkjet printing, and we can uh, use the same concept in 3D printing, and we can print ink uh, in 3D and make larger uh, scale structures. But these are laser, like this is a very small human head. Uh, uh -huh. Look at the accuracy. It's, wow. it's amazing. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Uh, and you know what, uh, when I think about what you do, uh, this right here, the brain almost explodes. I mean, it's amazing what, what you've been able to achieve so far. When you look at the future, and it was funny talking to you because you said, uh, well, sometimes we're talking about tumors. One day we're working on pancreas, the next day bones. Um, it, the field is so wide open, isn't it? Sure. Uh, there is a lot of demand. So. Uh, we cannot really make a, a, a distinction from organ to, you know, one organ to another organ. Uh, you know, each has some priority. So uh, there are a lot of patients, they need, uh, you know, uh, newborn, uh, a lot of people suffering from type 1 diabetes, uh, tumor, like cancer is number one problem in the world. So, you know, each has some sort of a, a priority uh, in its own uh, field. but. Uh, since we have the technology, the bioprinting technology that help us to, you know, make very complicated uh, cellular structures, uh, so why uh, don't we use that for, for, for different needs? And when you think about people on a waiting list for an organ, and then you think about the type of work that you're doing and extend it out further, I mean, when you get to the point where we're there, uh, it's, it's going to have a dramatic impact, isn't it? Sure, uh, this is uh, right. Uh, one of the main driving factors uh, of bioprinting and tissue engineering research is, uh, is to uh, create uh, replacement organs. Uh, eventually, you know, those organs uh, can be made uh, on demand, like uh, it will be customized. So based on uh, patients' own uh, medical image, based on uh, patients' own cells, uh, age factor is also important or, or, or different factors can be involved in, in, in it too. Uh, and then we can make these organs and then eventually these organs will be transplanted into human. Uh, there, is a, there is a big gap between the, uh, you know, the number of people waiting for organ donation and then the available organs. Uh, so uh, bioprinting has the capability uh, to, to make it, uh, but we still have some, some progress that needs to be done in the field. Uh, like we're making tissues now, as I told you, uh, like 10 years ago, we could be only print cells. Now we can print tissues. Now the next 10 years we'll make organs uh, that are large scale, uh, at human size, uh, can be transplantable. Uh, of course, uh, they're very, you know, detailed technical problems, but, but I believe in the next decade we can be able to overcome those. But you know what's funny is uh, 20 years ago, uh, this kind of conversation wouldn't be a conversation. It'd be something I'd be reading in a science fiction book. I mean, you're kind of bending science fiction into reality. That must be just a remarkable uh, achievement to be working in a lab where almost uh, your imagination is kind of the limit, isn't it? I mean, you're talking about creating an organ that would create electricity. We don't have an organ inside us that does that. Uh, is it limitless? So, uh, of course, there is limit all the time. Uh, but the imagination is limitless. So I always say this, uh, success in science is 50% imagination 
uh, and 50% uh, hard working. So uh, I work a lot, and my students, they work a lot too, but also we need very creative ideas. So we need to go beyond what exists uh, in reality. It's pretty heady stuff, though. I mean, are there days where you just sit there and shake your head and say, wow, this is a whole new frontier and I'm part of it? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's always a, a fascinating feeling uh, because what you make is going to serve for humanity, and I like this a lot. I like uh, making something for people. Uh, we're getting a lot of uh, emails from people, uh, like they thank us on, on what we're doing, and sometimes they... Uh, they're looking for solutions for their medical problems and then it really encourages us. So sometimes I break down like you know this doesn't work like you have a very tough scientific problem you can't really figure it out. Uh, sometimes you get discouraged but, but when you see such encouragement from people uh, it, it, it motivates us a lot. Well we'll leave it there. Thank you so much. Fascinating stuff. Appreciate you coming on the broadcast. Thank you.